What do I do with all of this stuff that's been left behind? Personal belongings after death? That's our topic for today. So clearing out personal belongings after a loved one's death can be both very emotional and cause some difficulties. After a loved one has passed away, the distribution of the estate is placed in the hands of the executor or the administrator. Or if it's a trust, it's in the hands of a trustee. In probate, once the personal representative has been appointed, then the assets can be distributed. In a trust, when the decedent has passed, the trustee can begin immediately. A very important tip is don't allow relatives or friends to rummage through the house and remove items until you've created an inventory list because they are valuable. You've valued them. They are part of the estate, which you are responsible to be a good steward for. Now, a second tip is to seriously consider changing the locks as soon as possible. I have a locksmith that I can recommend or a handyman to change doorknobs and it creates peace of mind. So the first thing to consider when addressing the decedent's personal property is to make an inventory. It's best if you can set a date for clearing out the home. Of course, it's ideal if you can do it with your family members, one room at a time, all together. From experience, it's just way better if everybody stays together. No one will be in one part of the house while the others are in another. People can be accused of taking something. Just recently, I helped Lorraine's family after their mother passed. She suggested that they all work together as a family. It worked out really beautifully because Lorraine and her sister were there together initially. They went through, took pictures to send to everyone who couldn't be there, and then they went to work so people could pick out what they wanted in advance. And they found out that if, if more than one of them wanted an item, that they would agree to set that aside and discuss it later. And by choosing not to disagree over the first item that you come across, it makes the process a lot less burdensome. If you believe something has really significant value, then agree to have it valued by an expert in that field. Once the value has been agreed upon, then it's up to you and whoever else is interested in that item as to how to best deal with it. If you can't agree, you can simply sell it and split. If you imagine there may be a dispute over any of the items, it's best to step in and let all of those interested parties know of your plans. So before you dispose of clothing, for example, ask if anyone has any item that they wish to keep for sentimental reasons. If you intend to sell something through maybe a vintage store or by placing it on OfferUp or eBay, then note those items on your inventory and make sure that you keep receipts for them as proof of sale. Again, it's so important to keep records and keep good records of everything. After these three steps and tips, there's three options remaining for the rest of the property. You can do a buyout, you can do a donation, and you can do a clean out. And I've had clients use all three. An estate sale, they donated uh, most of the clothing to the Salvation Army because that was her uh, mother's choice. And then Tracy went in after the estate sale, boxed up everything else that was going to be donated to a charity. Now, once that's all done, the house is now empty. We can move into the next step. That was me coming in to prepare the house for sale. These are emotional and stressful times. Helping you take care of the decedent's personal belongings with reverence and respect and to follow their wishes is top of mind for us. And if you are new here, welcome. Feel comfortable subscribing. You will be notified of my next weekly video. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.